Hello everyone and welcome to Adception. In this video, we are going to cover the chapter Transport of ICSC Class 10 Geography. Watch this video till the end and I hope you understand this chapter easily. If you do and if you like this video, do hit the thumbs up button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to Adception. Also, press the bell icon to get notified of all our videos. Without further ado, let's begin. Transport Let me tell you that transport is one of the easiest chapters of the geography syllabus. Using your common sense, you can answer almost all the questions that you will face in this particular chapter. So let's begin. A well-knit and coordinated system of transport is the lifeline of modern India. It is a facility for carrying passengers and goods from one place to another. We all know what transport is. Transport is a facility for moving passengers and goods from one place to another. Imagine your daily life. You travel to school regularly. You go to your tuitions. Then you can also go to play cricket, to play football or any sports. You can go somewhere to watch movies. How do you go to that place? Using any means of transport? So transport is a necessity. It is a facility that helps us to move from one place to another and we use transport in our day-to-day -day lives regularly. Okay, Transport is also used for the movement of goods which is also very important. Now transportation is very important for the economical development of any nation. That is why it is written that a well-knit and coordinated system of transport is the lifeline of modern India. Now what is a coordinated system of transport? We all know that there are many modes of transport, for example roadways, we have the railways, then we have aeroplane, then we have waterways, that means inland shipping and coastal shipping. When all these modes of transport work together and work in proper coordination, it helps a lot for the economical development of India. A well-developed transport network is a key factor for economic development. Like I told you that transport is very important for economical development. Let's discuss about this point by point. First, people. Like I told you in the modern times of globalization, people have to move from one place to another regularly. To do that, they need transport. Then trade. What is trade? Trade means buying and selling of goods. If you buy and if you sell goods, you need to move those goods from one place to another. Transport helps you in moving those goods from one place to another. Then industries. We all know that industries require raw materials. How do these raw materials reach the industries? Means of transport. And we know that industries produce finished goods. How do those finished goods reach from the industry to our houses? Transport. Now say you buy anything on e-commerce. It reaches your doorstep. How does it do that? Transport. A well-knit and well-coordinated system of transport. Then tourism. If you want to travel someplace and if you want to tour that place, you will need means of transport. So for tourism industry, transport is very, very important. Then time. We all know that time is money and we want to save as much time as possible. To save time, we have to use transport. Then finally, employment. Employment is a big key over here. The transport sector of India provides employment to millions of people. I think you should know that Indian Railways is the biggest employer of our country. That means it provides to the most number of people in our country. So guys, that was all regarding transport. I think you guys know what is the importance of transport. Then over here, we will have to study about four modes of transport, which are roadways, railways, airways and waterways. We will study about them one by one and we will begin with roadways. So let's start. Let's begin with roadways. Now you, I and everyone else uses roads daily to travel from one place to another by either walking or on a bicycle, on a bike, on a car or on a bus. There are many other modes available. We also use roads for the transportation of goods via trucks or vans. That is why roads in India are very very important for the population of India, that means for all of us and also the economical development of India. India has one of the largest road networks in the world. 
द रोड नेटवर्क इन इंडिया प्रोवाइड्स डोर टू डोर सर्विस एंड इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो इंडिया हैज वन ऑफ द लार्जेस्ट रोड नेटवर्क इन दर्ल्ड दैट मीन्स वी हैव अ लॉट ऑफ रोड इन इंडिया ऑल्सो इट इज रिटर्न दैट इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर इंडिया वाई इज इट इंपॉर्टेंट लेट्स चेक आउट फर्स्ट द रोड नेटवर्क ऑफ इंडिया इज वेरी वास्ट एंड इट कनेक्ट ऑलमोस्ट द इंटायर कंट्री नाउ रोड कनेक्ट रिमोट पार्ट ऑफ आर कंट्री parts of our country where the terrain is very very difficult that means high slopes high altitudes and all those places so roads connect almost the entire country that is why we have one of the largest road networks in the world next roads can be constructed in difficult terrain what are difficult terrain difficult terrain means high altitudes steep slopes where construction is very very difficult in those places also roads can be constructed next roads act as a connection to different modes of transport now there is a little distance between airports and railways how do we cover this distance via roads there is a little distance between railways and seaports how do we connect roads so basically roads act as a connection to different modes of transport for example railways and airports airports and seaports railways and seaports okay next the movement of perishable goods is faster and convenient by roads now what are perishable goods the goods that can go bad in a very short amount of time so roads are very useful for the movement of perishable goods as it provides door to door service so perishable goods can be moved in a fast pace and it is also very convenient next roadways are cheap in construction and maintenance as compared to other modes of transport roads are cheap in construction and the maintenance is also very cheap and easy so guys that was the importance of roadways and also the advantages of roadways now we will check out the disadvantages of roadways in india first unmetalled roads and poor maintenance we all know that we may have the largest road networks in the entire world but there are many unmetalled roads in india what are unmetalled roads kachcha roads basically the roads that do not have asphalt on it that means pitch on it so basically in the rainfall season those roads become very very bad and almost unusable adding to that there is poor maintenance of roads in india we all know about this next traffic jams a big problem in india we all know that traffic jam is a big problem in india especially in metro cities it is a very big problem in mumbai delhi kolkata traffic jam is a very big problem next road side amenities and services are limited now most of us live in urban area so we do not face this problem we find many road side amenities and services but when we move to rural areas the road side amenities and services are very very limited that includes food restroom even police and other services then the quality of roads decrease within a few years of construction now this is because of corruption now they construct bad roads and those bad roads the quality of those bad roads decrease within 1 to 2 years and new roads have to be constructed so that is also a very big problem in india okay guys that was all regarding roadways now this was all that is in your syllabus other than this you can study many other things about roadways like the golden quadrilateral what are express ways what are highways what are state highways what are national highways all of this is available in your book so you can read that too it is very very interesting okay now we'll move on to the next mode of transport moving on to railways railway is the principal mode of transportation in india india has one of the largest railway networks in the world now we all know the importance of railways in india many of us use railways for our day to day commute to offices and schools via local trains or metro trains almost all of us use railways for long distance travel and railways is also very important for the movement of bulk cargo goods like coal and petroleum from one place to another now these are the reasons why railways has played an important role in the economical development of our country and in the future too 
railways will keep playing an important role in the growth of our country. Now, what are the advantages of railways in India? First, the vast railway network of India connects the entire country. Now, many remote locations in India are connected via the means of railway. If someone wants to travel from a remote location to an urban location, he or she can do that via the means of railway because we have a vast railway network and the connection is very very good. That is why India has one of the largest railway networks in the world. Next, as compared to other modes of transport, railway offers cheap transportation. We all know about this. If we compare railways to other modes of transportation, the railway fares will be on the cheaper side as compared to other modes of transportation. Next, Indian Railway is the largest employer of our country. I told you about this a little while back in this video that Indian Railway is the largest employer of our country. That means it provides employment to lakhs of people in our country. Next, local trains are very important in cities like Mumbai. Now in urban cities like Mumbai and Kolkata, local trains and metro trains are very very important because many people are dependent on local trains and metro trains for their daily commute. That is why local trains are very important, especially in Mumbai, local train is the lifeline of Mumbai. Next, metro trains are very important in cities like Delhi and Kolkata. Same thing over here also. In many urban cities like Delhi and Kolkata, metro trains are very important because metro trains act as a means of daily commute for many people. Next, for bulk products like coal, petroleum and other raw materials, railway is the cheapest mode of transportation. Now, if we have to transport bulk materials like coal, petroleum, iron ore or any other raw materials, railway is the best mode of transport and it is also the cheapest mode of transport. So guys, that was all regarding the advantages and importance of railways in our country. Now, what are the disadvantages of railways in our country? Basically, the disadvantages over here are the problems we face while traveling in railways. First, due to increasing population, railways are becoming overcrowded. Waiting list. We all know about waiting list. Then, whenever we travel in local trains and metro trains, we can see the crowd. Always overcrowded. In many long distance trains also, the crowd is very high. Next, delays are very frequent. Indian railways almost always late. Then, lack of quality facilities. Now, if we keep aside trains like Tejas Express, Vande Bharat Express, Rajdhani Express and Satabdi Express, the facilities are not quality facilities in other trains. Finally, safety is a big concern in Indian railways. Theft is common. So guys, that was all regarding railways. Everything is very important over here. So try to understand everything properly. Now we will move on to the next mode of transport. Moving on to airways. Air transport is the fastest mode of transport. We all know this that air transport is the fastest means of transportation for passengers as well as for cargo. But this fast transportation is very expensive. If we compare airways to other modes of transportation, then airways will come out to be the most expensive mode of transport. Now, what are the advantages of airways? First, it is the fastest means of transportation for passengers as well as for cargo. Second, it is very convenient for people who have to travel long distance in less time. Now, by air travel, long distances can be covered in very less time. Say for example, I live in Kolkata and I want to visit Delhi. If I take the Rajdhani Express, it will take me 17 to 18 hours to reach Delhi from Kolkata. But if I take a flight, it will only take me 2 hours to 2.5 hours to reach Delhi from Kolkata. So it saves a lot of time. Then, in emergency situations of health, air ambulance is very useful. I hope you guys know about air ambulance. If the condition of a patient becomes very critical and a transfer is necessary, 
then that transfer can be made by the help of air ambulance because it takes very less time to travel from one place to another via air transport. So it is very helpful in emergency situations of health. Next, in many regions of Northeast India, air transport plays a key role because of the lack of road and rail transport. Now in many regions of Northeast India, the terrain is very difficult to build roads and railways. So over there, air transport plays a key role. Okay, so it is very important over there. So guys, that was all regarding the advantages and the importance of air transport. Now, what are the problems and disadvantages of airways? First, it is very expensive. We all know this, that air travel is expensive. Second, many airlines in India face lack of funds and bankruptcy. I hope you guys know about this also. We all know that Air India is not in a good condition. Kingfisher went bankrupt, Jet Airways went bankrupt. So there is a big problem in India because airlines face lack of funds and bankruptcy. Finally, delays are caused because of bad weather. Now if the weather conditions is very bad, then the flights get delayed. So guys, that was all regarding the problems faced by airways. Now, everything is very important over here. So try to understand everything properly. Now we will move on to the final mode of transportation. Moving on to the final mode of transport, waterways. Water transport is one of the cheapest modes of transport. It is very useful for the movement of heavy cargo and goods. Generally, water transport is used for the movement of heavy cargo and goods. Majority of the import and export of goods and cargo done in India is done via the means of water transport. Now, waterways can be divided into two segments, inland water transport and coastal shipping. Inland water transport, the transportation of goods and cargo via rivers like Ganga, Brahmaputra and Narmada. Basically, the transportation of cargo via inland rivers, that means the rivers present in India, is called inland water transport. Generally, the rivers Ganga, Brahmaputra and Narmada are used for inland water transport. Then we have coastal shipping. The movement of goods and passengers via sea and ocean routes from the coastal ports of India. We all know that India has a very vast coastline. That is why coastal shipping is very important for India. Now, the movement of goods and passengers via ocean routes from the coastal ports of India is called coastal shipping. There are many major coastal ports in India. For example, Mumbai, Kochi, Chennai, Vishakhapatnam and many others. Majority of the international trade that is done in India is done by the means of coastal transportation. That means coastal shipping. So guys, that was all regarding waterways and water transport. Now, what are the advantages? That means the importance of waterways. First, water transport is cheap and it is environment friendly. Now, ships require a very less amount of fuel to travel long distances. That is why they are cheap and they are environment friendly. And in a single go, a large amount of goods and cargo can be transported by a single ship. Then, majority of international trade is done via coastal shipping. Like I told you that majority of import and export done in India is done via the means of water transport, especially coastal shipping. Then, Large amount of goods and cargo can be transported via water transport. I told you this also, in a single go, a large amount of goods and cargo can be transported via water transport. That means cargo ships. Now what are the disadvantages of waterways? First, inland water transport is not possible in southern India. Why is that? Because rivers in southern India dry up during the summer season. That is why in southern India, inland water transportation cannot be used. Then, water transport is slow. Now, water transport may be cheap and it may be environment friendly, but it is a slow means of transport. Finally, Indian ports lack modern facilities. Nowadays, modernization is taking place, so this problem won't last long. 
so guys that was all regarding waterways everything is very important over here so try to understand everything properly now guys with the end of waterways we come to an end of the chapter transport i hope you understood this chapter easily now as always this is rishi on behalf of reception signing off and guys take care